If you've never started a business before, chances are your first business is not going to be your last business. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you a small clip from one of our podcast episodes with Kevin Williams, who is the CEO of Balls.co, <laughs> a really incredible brand that's taking over TikTok. And I asked him what was his criteria for starting a business or buying a business because he buys businesses now. And his answer, in my opinion, will be hugely helpful to you guys as it was for myself. So without further ado, here's the clip. Could you go over again just some of the things that you would look for if you were to, well, at this point you're buying businesses, but if you were to like start something. So uh, yeah, I went over them a, a little while ago, but it is, a, it's like a, it's like a rubric of yeah. scoring and uh, given the cost of acquisition. Okay. I, mean, I, I usually put cost of, ac uh, cost of acquisition and AOV is mm -hmm. first. Um, if you were going to have a business that is dependent on direct response advertising, CPCs these days are easily, you know, 35 on a good day up to 75, depending on your, on your, on your vertical. Mm -hmm. So you either need to have an AOV that's well north of $100 or an yes. LTV, probably an 18 month LTV that is well north of $150. I basically wouldn't consider a brand that's smaller than that. In fact, I, I passed on a brand just today. I, it was really? it, it's so much, so much goodness there, but I passed on it. It had good intellectual property. It had a great website. It used oh, to be man. doing a ton of money, but its AOV was like forty-five bucks, and it was in like the women's accessory space, which mm -hmm. is not—it's not an area that I'm like super intimate in. Yeah. So I would have to create this like influencer strategy that was on it. It would be so noisy, and it would be so hard to make money in it. So yeah. I, eventually, I was like, I just passed because there's just not enough money in the transaction, and I think. People tend to look at um, lower priced niches because they feel like they're more saleable. Okay, yeah. well, I can afford this MOQ for getting my, myself going. But you know, you pointed to drop shipping. Like, I hesitate to recommend drop shipping to anybody these days. I think yeah. it's just super, super hard. But but getting a product like, do you want to sell, you know, fifteen dollar headphones or do you want to sell four hundred dollar headphones? And one is they they might have the same technology inside. One's probably better than the other, but one is like a brand exercise and you have to acquire so many fewer customers to make the whole thing work and you can True. tell better stories. So that's the next part is, so item two is the brand has to be genial. Like just getting out there and, and, and trying to sell something random, like, I don't know, diffusers or, you know, there are all these like, like a humidifier. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, Trying to sell a commodity just sucks. That's why Amazon was born. So like you need to be able to tell a story and really lean into a story. And like with balls, I had no choice. Like you right. buy a brand called balls. <laughs> what are you selling? Like I'm either gonna go like down the like adult care angle or I'm gonna do like this, what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you have to be able to tell a story around it. And this particular one just had so much potential. It's yeah. off the charts. But even the brush thing, like, you know, cleaning a car, like making a guy feel good about himself because he cleaned his, his Camaro over the weekend. Like, you know, there's a story that you can tell in there. So look at the story and make sure it's visual. Um, everything's visual in market, marketing these days. So can you tell a visual story that you can turn into video that, that is consumable? Uh, I generally look for brands that have um, some sort of a moat around them, um, like subscription businesses, uh, intellectual property. I feel less good about um, just pure patent protection than I used to. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you, you, you had uh, to learn that the hard yeah. way. <laughs> um, but having a moat that gives you some defensibility is really important. So, you know, having solid trademarks um, that you can fight off the, the, the other people. Um, then there's some of the logistics elements like, man, that's so I, I sell an electromechanical product right now. And it is it's you know, a lot can go wrong between yeah. circuit boards and batteries and charging and all kinds of stuff. Um, and it's it's a durable product. I mean, it's built to be dropped on a shower floor and not die. So that's that's good. But when you see products that are that are really delicate, um, I mean, it's postal services seem to be run by like Clydesdale horses or something like that. Like stuff gets battered, stuff gets dropped. Like your returns percentage is really, really high. 
and that can really eat into your business. And then the actual dimensions, I think this one is like so overlooked. Like, mm -hmm. so our product packaged, complete, nice box, poly, poly bag was 15.99 ounces. If that thing weighed like grams more, it would cost me three or $4 extra per unit to fulfill. And wow. that changes the economics in a lot of products. Like, I can't believe how much people overlook this. Like, if you can sell a product under 16 ounces, that is good because you can ship it US first class and save a whole bunch of money, right? Yeah. If you can't be under 16 ounces, then you better be under five pounds because that's the next bit. And if you're not, you better understand how you're going to deal with that because with transport costs increasing, it's just going to completely eat your lunch. So, yeah. And oh, I'm sorry. So the other characteristics would be scalability through accessories. Um, so, so like upsells, uh, cross sells, stuff like that. Sells, cross sells, catalog sales to so the brush, the hero product. So the trimmer is a hero product. The brush was a hero product. But like with the brush, I had replaceable heads. So it had a subscription and an element to it. But I also could get into the car deal of detailing lifestyle. So I could get into soaps and towels and all kinds of other stuff that people would want. They only really need one brush but they need all this other stuff that, that um, I now have permission to market to them. So durability of relationship, um, uh, cost of acquisition is so hard, high, you need to have an LTV. You can't just be like, bye, 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 bye. You've got to form a relationship with your customer that allows you to sell them things over many months or many years.